My name is Courtney Dressing. All right. And Courtney, are we alone in the universe? I hope not. You hope not. <laughs> Why do you hope not? Because I'm spending my career trying to find life on other planets. And I think it would be really sad if the only life in the galaxy were on Earth. Sad? Wouldn't, wouldn't that make us really special? Perhaps, but I would rather have friends than be special. <laughs> Are you sure they're going to be friendly? I don't know, but it would be interesting to find out. All right. So you say, you, so you're not, sh when I ask you, are we alone, you, you don't know, but you hope not. Right. All right. And uh, when I asked you that question, are we alone, what did you understand by the word we? I thought you meant all of humanity or perhaps all of life on Earth. Do you have any preference for one of those? I think there's a lot of cool life that isn't human, so I should probably be more inclusive. If I were not in this room, would you be alone? There, well, probably. In some sense, I would be alone. In another sense, I'm sure there are spiders somewhere in this mm -hmm. room. Okay, so yes and no is that the answer. Right. I was just trying to get a, you know, we have to figure, in the question, are we alone? There are two words. One is we and one is alone. I'm trying to figure out what they mean. And sometimes, since we're social species, maybe mm -hmm. we don't like to be alone, and so therefore it's... We want an answer to the question, but if we were asocial, more like orangutans, maybe we wouldn't think this question was so important. That's a fair point. Do you think this question is important? I do. I why? think it's interesting because from a scientific perspective, it would be nice to know exactly how and why life evolves. And if it's only unique to Earth, then that tells us something. How and why as well as how? How is one thing why, really? Well, like, why does it happen? It, will it always happen given certain conditions, or is it a rare event that happens only with some certain probability? And by it, you mean the evolution of, or the emergence of? The emergence of life. And do you mean viruses as well, or not? As an astronomer, I'm going to let other people decide whether viruses count. All right, okay. So My guess is no. You're hoping that ambiguity is not part of your field. Well, I, I think that... I care about the next stage. I would love to know whether there are microbes in the universe, but the thing I'm really interested in is, are there other civilizations out there that also have telescopes, and could they find us, and do they know that we exist? So you're pretty optimistic about the moral integrity and non-killing. There won't be coming to kill us. Well, I feel like humans really shouldn't start judging. It's like the pot and the kettle. Aren't you judging by being so optimistic and thinking they're all going to be nice? necessarily thinking they're going to be nice. I just don't think they're going to be that much worse than we are. And they probably know things about physics and astronomy that I don't know and I want to learn from them. Is that your main motivation, to learn from the advanced aliens? No, it's mostly just pure curiosity. Uh, there's a question about, uh, when I talk to SETI people, mm -hmm. and they're, they're exclusively looking for human-like intelligent, al intelligent aliens, and I, and I often accuse them, or they have been accused of kind of like looking for God, or God is some omniscient creator who's going to tell you the answer to all your questions about physics and morality or whatever. Do you, what do you think of that idea, or that accusation? I think it's an interesting search, and everyone has their own motivation, and I'm more interested in just learning what's out there, and I think that's why I went into science. I want to know the answers to like, why everything is the way it is, and I would like to know the current state of the universe, and that includes whether there are other worlds with life on them. Do you think this curiosity which you seem to be exhibiting makes you a better person? Not necessarily. I think that's a value judgment that you can't assume based on someone's interest or lack thereof in life. If I gave you $100 billion with the caveat mm -hmm. that you had to spend it to try to answer the question, are we alone, how would you spend it? Oh, I would build Louvoir. You'd which, build Louvoir. Yes, which is, and I would have money left over. So why don't you tell, a lot our, of money why don't you tell our audience what Louvoir is? So Louvoir is the large ultraviolet optical infrared surveyor. It is a large space telescope. It's actually a concept. It's not yet funded or approved, but it's an idea for a mission that and would launch. And how much is going to cost? We don't know yet, but it will not be $100 billion. Okay, okay. It will be less than that. Um, we will find out the cost later on when it's costed by NASA in preparation for the 2020 Decadal Review. And uh, the purpose, science goal of this is? Multi-goals. Um, one of the goals, the one that I'm personally most excited about, is to detect life on nearby planets. And we can't guarantee that we will find life, but with Louvoir, we'll survey enough planets to place a statistical limit on the likelihood of life in the galaxy. By surveying planets, you mean looking at the absorption lines in the atmosphere, light coming through the atmospheres of these planets? Actually, with Louvoir, what we'll do is we'll directly image the planet. So we'll oh. see a star, and we'll block out the light from the star, and that will allow us to see the planet that's right near the star. So the common analogy is looking for a firefly next to a searchlight, yeah. but that's actually much easier. The searchlight is fainter compared to the, flash, the firefly than the star is to the planet. 
In addition to doing this science and allowing us to find things like oxygen and methane and ozone in the atmospheres of potentially habitable or inhabited planets, Louvoir will also allow us to study the earliest stages of galaxy formation and learn more about our own solar system. What do you think are the public's or your students' biggest misconceptions about the question, are we alone? I think one of the big misconceptions is that when people think about aliens, they automatically think of the aliens they've seen in movies. And on Earth, we are not the most common form of life, so it's weird to think that something that looks like us would be the most common form of life elsewhere in the galaxy. Okay, so that's, that's a form of projecting yourself onto mm -hmm. the universe. Right. Which we do again and again and again. Aren't you guilty of that when you ask, you want to find, you know, friendly, intelligent aliens? Well, I just would rather find an alien I could talk to, that's all. Well, you can talk to yourself. We're talking right now, so aren't you projecting that onto the universe? Probably. Talk. Which is only human. That doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> so is that one of your biggest misconceptions about the question, are we alone? Well, once we find the answer, we'll find out what my misconceptions <laughs> okay. are. All right. Do you have any advice for students or people, or for people who are thinking about becoming astrobiologists? From the astronomy side, I think my biggest piece of advice is to start learning computer programming early. Take the science and math classes that your school offers, and more if you can. Definitely enjoy reading and pursuing other hobbies. You can't do science 100% of the time, and the majority of what you will do as a professional scientist is actually reading and writing, so it makes sense to hone those skills. And also have fun, and don't forget why you got interested in the first place.